So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Reddington virtual sessions. Today's topic we have from Barracuda on CloudGen Firewall, securing your business through during the pandemic. We have Mohan Kumar, our pre-sales consultant from KSA, who will be running you through the session. In case you have any questions during the session, we would request you to please put in put them in the Q&A box and Mohan will answer them at the end of the session. Mohan, over to you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, for uh, joining today's session. So uh, today we're going to see how uh, the enterprise or business is allowing the users remotely to access their corporate data. So uh, as this pandemic occurs, uh, Microsoft had seen seven times increase in their cloud services, means people uh, started using from their uh, working from home and they are trying to access their corporate data from either through VPN or through cloud resources. And there are uh, there is a 125% increase in the VPN access between March 9th and March 22nd. So two things, when a business wants to give access to the user, two things comes to their mind. One is access and the flexibility. What access they should give to the users and how flexible they can have this uh, deployment. So for years and years, uh, company had made their network so uh, secure and uh, they have blocked access from outside. So during this pandemic, it is mandated to have the same access while out of their uh, network. So how the business gonna like uh, see this change? So we'll uh, see in the today's session. And uh, these are the remote uh, access challenges. So. Uh, the corporate or company, they uh, decided to give uh, the secure access to the users, how well they can secure the access. And uh, they cannot give, they cannot be able to give devices for uh, each uh, business users, how they cannot tackle this, for an example, the school. So not all uh, teachers will be having a PC or uh, laptops given by the school. So the school uh, will check with the teachers, like whether they have their own laptops or iPads and they will encourage them to use their own personal devices for accessing or uh, connecting the school's webinars or uh, co connecting to their uh, network. So how flexible the company can uh, do the deployment and if at all uh, the current perimeter uh, firewall or their existing firewall cannot have this uh, feature and this time uh, they bought a new firewall. How flexible they can uh, put this Barracuda in their network and uh, how long they're gonna have this uh, changes Let's see over the session. And we have three types of users. One is the power users. So for example, a bank employee or a bank user. So he will has to connect to the core banking application or uh, to the databases on uh, from a regular nine to five uh, basis. And there are some mobile users who need not to be connected to uh, their corporate network, but they'll still uh, be traveling and they'll be using their own devices like laptops tablets or even their mobiles to access either emails or any backend application or a simple files are uh, file share uh, servers. So how the company gonna have control on these uh, remote access. Okay, so uh, and other uh, user, it's like a normal third party user, you can say auditor or someone who need not to be uh, like uh, having these uh, corporate devices and need not to have a particular uh, um, uh, corporate applications so they have to use the third party application or uh, their own browser based or uh, no need to like uh, install a vpn client or something so how the corporate gonna give access to them and with uh, firewalls as a company wanted to give access they need to have a flexible solution like the uh, in this situation they'll have to deploy it remotely so they cannot go to their place and do uh, connect to the data center and do the initial configuration and test it and then uh, deploy it to the user. No, it won't work in this time. So it, they'll have to have a various type of deployment option. So uh, if they have more than 100 branches, how are they going to manage all these firewalls from a single place? So we will have answers for all these uh, questions. With Barracuda Firewall, you will have uh, three main things. One is protect, connect, and enable. So it will protect from uh, multi-layered uh, security. It has its own antivirus engine. It has its own uh, threat prevention engine. It has its own uh, sandboxing on the cloud. 
and uh, you can have multiple VPN connection and it, you can also have SD1 enabled on the appliance itself. And uh, for the cloud, it's like pre-deployed uh, uh, packages available, so you can simply plug and play. So these are the challenges uh, comes when uh, corporate or uh, customer want to put a firewall solution. So if they have multiple branches, if they have more than 100 uh, uh, firewall boxes, how they gonna manage it? And if they have uh, admins for each branches, and uh, they'll have to audit and they'll have to do the tracing like which admin did which changes on which firewall so how so barcoda has a solution for each instance and how the security can be uh, enforced for the remote uh, users or even uh, someone who's trying to connect to their uh, network whether it is an employee or a th third party like auditors or vendors who are helping the customers uh, for their ongoing businesses Okay. So with firewall, we'll have uh, two options. One it's like uh, one is the uh, cloud gen firewall, another is the cloud gen uh, control center. So this control center is a centralized management for managing multiple firewalls from a single uh, uh, glass pane of windows. So you can also have a zero touch deployment. So you don't have to like uh, uh, put the box in the data center, connect to a laptop and do the initial configuration. So all you can do it from a remote place. All you have to do is push the configuration package to the end user and the moment the firewall is connected and it will automatically fetch the configuration from the firewall control center and it will be like uh, working for the first time itself. So with the Barcura firewall, we'll have all the security in place. We have malware protection, we have file contents uh, filtered. So you can like uh, restrict what file content to be allowed and what file content to be blocked. For an example, you want to block all audio files, you can block all audio files and media files, and you can also allow particular extension, whether a PDF file to be downloaded only from Crow. Yeah, you can uh, create a policy. Only uh, users can uh, use Chrome to download PDF files or any Office uh, related files. And you can also enforce SSL inspection, meaning so you can uh, decrypt the traffic and apply all the policies and re-encrypt and uh, send it back to the users. So you also have a behavior and heuristical analysis for the ATP. So any file that is downloaded from the browser or through SMTP, the file will be sent to the Barcoda Cloud where it does its sandboxing. So in sandboxing, they have a multi-layer of inspection. So one is like the signature analysis, and other it's uh, it'll then it'll go to the static code analysis. Then it'll check whether the file is like uh, genuine or it is doing any uh, malicious or uh, suppose uh, doing something which is not supposed to do. It will check all these sign behaviors, and then only one, when the file is genuine, it will allow the users to download or uh, get in their uh, return on their file system. If it is found malicious at any point of time, it will block and it will only give an alert to either user or admin saying like this file is malicious and you cannot uh, download the same. And uh, yeah, let's uh, move on. So these are the various uh, user awareness like uh, you can integrate with LDAP, you can integrate with the Radius, Takakas, SAML. So, uh, so this will be uh, this is what will secure the remote users. So when you are giving access, uh, remote access to any users, so you can enable, make use of these type of authentication uh, available, and you can enforce uh, the users to get them authenticated using these services. And <clears throat> before that, uh, let me show you some uh, VPN. So if you have like more than uh, ten branches, how difficult it's to configure for VPN between these branches. So from head office, it should be able to reach out to all the branches and from each branches, they should able to have an inter connectivity. So just imagine if you are deploying a new firewall to achieve the same. And uh, as a IT perspective, this will be like a tedious task for any firewall. But with Barcuda, it's like, it's very simple. All you have to do is you just connect which VPN to uh, connect to the branch office and which VPN to connect to the head office. And you can simply uh, get it done within five minutes. So that is how simple it looks. 
so as you saying you it's like just drag and drop so the user is trying to drag and drop and automatically the vpn mesh is created and the final result you have the connectivity and this is the agenda of our session today so how we are giving uh, user access through vpn so uh, barcoda has an app called kuda launch so this app it's for windows android and um, ios so they can make use of this app or they can also use the browser based as a vpn so the same uh, ssl vpn can be accessible through kudo launch app browser based and the vpn uh, client so i'll uh, show you a small demo for each so this is the kudo launch app before that this is the browser based the same must be access over the browser so you can make uh, use of your uh, authenticator and a login so you can see the favorite chat and these are the various application and this is an internal application the moment you connect it will connect to the local uh, application so this is uh, cms and this is a customer relationship management which is a which is again an internal server and if you want to have make use of rdp or something you can always uh, this is an internal lab. So with this browser base, you can only publish applications and uh, share folders. So this is the share folders. As you can see, I'm moving over some folders and this is a file. You can edit the file remotely. As you can see, you can this is edit the file, everything. The same thing, it's been in an access through Kudo Launch app, you have an advantage of uh, doing a remote. So for an example, these are all the various uh, application. These application already seen in the browser. And this is the RDP. And we have two types of RDP. One is single sign-on and one is a credential prompt. Let's see what happens when I click on single sign-on. Automatically, it will connect to the backend server. Yes, and click connect. Without even asking username and password, you have a RDP session to the backend server. And uh, if you have a credential prompt, you just click on it. Automatically, the RDP will be initiated and it will ask you for the username and password. Okay. So based on the user's requirement, based on how they want to deploy this, they can always customize. And you always have the tunnel and these are the various uh, vpn so if you want a vpn to headquarters once you click on it automatically a vpn client will be triggered and it will connect to the headquarters uh, vpn so as you can see when it's trying to connect to headquarters a vpn client will be paracore network access client you are now successfully connected to the headquarters uh, vpn so once it is there you can always use your native uh, app msdsc or you can use your command or your always if you see vpn so this is a local ip so which you got through the ssl vpn so this is how it works on the windows let me show how it works on the iOS so this is our iOS device and this is the CUDA launch I'm logging in as a guest it's connection timeout let me try that again and it is having multiple login so you can also have OTP or uh, Active Directory. So for the demo, it has kept uh, Microsoft Active Directory as well as OTP. So I'm going to use Active Directory for this. So once you log in, you will see the same screen as you seen in the desktop app. So you you can see the tunnel, you can see the VPN, you can see the folders, you can see the apps, and this is the favorites. So if you want to add any favorites, you just click on it and you choose which one to appear in the favorite and you just uh, confirm it. So let's test the content management system. So Collect this will open a browser and this is the 
internal side and this is the customer relations management yes and you have headquarters intranet this is the intranet uh, file okay so you can go through the archive you can yeah and uh, you have a tunneled apache landing page you can see it is a if you see the address it is the local address 127.0.0 it's a local address so this is a test page so you can uh, see the default page of uh, apache and windows rtp so see how we're connecting uh, ipad through a since it's iPad, there is no single sign-on. So single sign, if uh, you can see the difference. Like when I use the desktop application, it didn't ask for the username and password, even though the single sign-on is enabled because it uses the Windows uh, session credential and it will let you to log in. But for the iPad, you'll have to just give the password. See, it you can see the same. You can do whatever uh, you want to do in the remote uh, machine. Okay. So, Internet Explorer. Yes. Okay, let me close this. This is the folders you can, similar to the desktop application, you can uh, edit the text, rename or you can always edit it this is a demo text file which is accessible over the file server uh, if you see on the top right the vpn is established the moment i open coda launch or get authenticated it will the remote is opened and these are the various vpn headquarters as you see this is now part of the headquarter vpn <sighs> You see before the same site uh, which I was accessible or now it's not accessible because I'm connected to a headquarters uh, VPN where the site is not published. So similarly you can connect to various VPN over here and you can also have a SSH uh, tunnel. So once SSH tunnel is established you can have uh, SSH to the targeted uh, machine. See the moment I disconnect the network client is uh, closed automatically. So this application can be downloaded from the Microsoft Store. So this is the access you are giving to the users or even third party. And even if the third party, they don't want to use the app and they don't have a support app for Windows, they can always use the browser based. So this will be the browser based. And the only difference for the browser based and the app, you can have RDP only on the app. Like you see this RDP is available only for the app. It's not available on the browser-based uh, applications. So browser-based, you can have all uh, web-based, or you can always use the uh, network client to uh, connect. So this is the network client. This is the network client. You can always get a profile created. So this is your new profile. So this can be like pushed automatically when you deploy your profile from the Barracuda Cloud and Firewall. So here you can give the server name and you can give the username and password for authentication and what type of tunnel uh, is going to be established. And you can always set like the time out and how long you're going to stay connected and everything. Once the profile is cr uh, created either manually or uh, pushed from Cloud Generation uh, Firewall, you can make use of the VPN client. So once you connect through Barracuda VPN client, you can start using your uh, native browser. As I mentioned, you can uh, use CUDA launch to connect your on-premises uh, published or uh, locally available uh, servers like SharePoint or internal application, which I've shown in the demo, your Jira servers. The same can be achieved if your cloud gen firewall is on the cloud, like Azure or AWS or even Google public cloud you can connect to your uh, cloud resources so this is how you give uh, secure access to the users okay
this is the end of the session if you have any question and answer you can always use the question and answer window so this is available only for the trina protocol so the drag and drop automatically will create a tina configuration and all you have to do is make sure the our uh, correct uh, authentication or encryption has been used so once that is made you simply drag and drop this will be applicable only for the tina protocol thank you so much uh, mohan thanks for the session and thanks everyone for attending the session as well